let's get straight to the point. I have to do the bare minimum to complete Super Mario Sunshine without taking a single hit. To spare myself complete agony, I do have a way of making things a little more bearable. If I take a hit, I have to close the game immediately and start it back up. I don't have to restart the playthrough, but I must abort whatever I am doing at that moment and reopen the game from the Switch home screen. Life loss is considered any action that reduces my normal health meter, enemy contact, environmental hazards, and fall damage. Additionally, if I end up in an instant kill situation such as falling off a stage into the void, the same turn off the game rule applies. The oxygen meter from being underwater does not count towards this as it is considered its own separate meter from health, and including this would lock me out of certain shines. But if I'm hit by an enemy underwater, that does count and is considered a legal hit. When I originally wrote this script, I was under the impression a certain amount of shines was needed to beat the game. Yes and no ended up being the answer to that, and will be explained with time. For this playthrough I will be joined by Nintendo Did Something Stupid news article Mario to keep track of how many times I absolutely goofed it during this run. I'll preface this by saying I won't be going over every single time I failed for the sake of time, but I will tell you that this run was an unholy mess of bad research, wasted time, tedium, and frustration, and the counter on the screen will hopefully reflect that. Let's a go. The adventure began when Mario and company almost die horribly in a plane crash because some idiot spilled Trix yogurt all over the runway. Toadsworth, the useless assistant to the princess that he is, tasks me with going to look for help. With some wandering around, I introduce myself to Flood and the controls. Hello, Mario. I spray the lump in the airport, revealing my first boss. This thing. It becomes kind enough to hammer up the dent it left behind and reveals the first shine sprite. The police arrest Mario for being a decent person, and the judge ignores the testimony of the literal princess in the courtroom. Sometime later, Flood gives me a pep talk in prison, and I am released. I got to work cleaning up the town square and the respective townsfolk. During the cleanup, I somehow managed to take my first hit, and was forced to do the entire goddamn intro all over again, cutscenes and all. As I've played the game a few times back on the GameCube to say the least, I tried to skip these cutscenes, but unfortunately, Nintendo, even in 2002, is physically incapable of implementing any basic quality of life features. I pressed everything on the controller and nothing worked. Started cleanup again and revealed the brown goop monster. A statue appeared with Totally Not Mario and Princess Kidnap got peached. I got hurt again and was really getting tired of having to wait through the courtroom scenes. Among us. I made the big brain move to actually save in the town square to save myself a headache, and was more successful in actually getting Shadow Mario this time. Next stop was Bianco Hills to give the first mission the hypothetical finger and go straight to Petey Piranha. Fun fact, the Pinta at the windmill actually has special dialogue if you go there first. I fell to my death and dealt with Petey, getting shine number two. Went to the secret on the hill, died, and did the game as intended. I will note that I will try to skip as much as I can as this is a 20 hour playthrough and I can only repeat myself so many times. You'll see the death counter jump a lot. I spent a good while in Bianco Hills getting some shine sprites, found a bird shitting everywhere, sent Petey back to hell, and continuously screwed up the Dirty Lake mission. Back in the plaza, I cleaned up the raccoon hut and went up against Gooper Blooper. Now, the last time I played this game, I found out that if you time yourself right, you don't even need to get his tentacles. You can go right up to his face, pull his nose, and progress the fight. However, I forgot that I'm doing a no-hits run, so naturally I kept taking damage every other time I tried to do this. With due time, I banished him to the sea and got my seventh shine. Some comedian thought it would be funny to replace the lighthouse with a puddle of oil, and I went back to Rico Harbor in frustration. Did some racing, climbed some girders, forgot what the controls were to use the grates, and began the secret of Rico Tower. It went well right up until I bonked my head, fell on my ass, and landed in the drink. Now, I don't know if it's a combination of old GameCube to Switch port jank or the fact that my controller is pushing 20, but it felt like this game just didn't register button presses on occasion. During this level in particular, I had a moment where I tried to jump and I swear I pressed the button and it didn't go. Maybe my timing is just bad. Meanwhile, Gooper Blooper came back and I fell into a boat. He was sent packing and I went back to Bianco to try the Dirty Lake secret one more time. That didn't go well, so I cleaned up the lighthouse, cleaned up Toad, and went to the beach. A sand castle appeared after watering some plants, I got juggled by those stupid blue duck things, got my swag stolen again, and cleared the sand castle stage with no issue. Some ugly ass boat docked in the harbor and Toad informed me that someone took Peach again. You see this cutscene? You like it? I had to watch it. A lot. More times than any human being should. In fact, I think during this entire playthrough, I watched this cutscene more times than most people do their entire lives. Because I had to enter the fifth circle of hell, more commonly known among the religious on Isle Delfino as Pina Park. 
I hope you like Giant Robots and or Bowser because you're going to be seeing him a lot. Mecha Bowser Returns is not an easy mission. In any other playthrough, you could do this feasibly in one shot, however trying to do it without taking hits is another story. This is one of the very few times in the game where everything has to be absolutely perfect between your aim, your timing, and your speed in which you do it all. I spent a good long while on this mission, pushing my death count higher and higher each time complete with non-skippable cutscenes! With my death count pushing into the 40s, I gave up. Keep in mind at this point I was still under the impression I needed 50 shines to finish the game, so I was thinking, is it possible to beat this game legitimately without ever going into Peanut Park? Back in the beach, I cleaned up the mirror, killed a giant worm, rode some sand, and tried the watermelon level, but didn't get very far. And by this point, I hit 50 deaths total. I battled Shadow Mario in Rico Harbor, went back to the Dirty Lake again and again, and proceeded to waste oodles of time. Once I was in the 60s, I found myself in Noki Bay, opened a cork, and began the Ancient Ruins thing. What looks like a platforming challenge becomes meaningless once you realize you have a hover ability. And guess who won't stay dead? This is when the blooper really started to annoy me. I spent more time than I care to admit on this level in particular, especially when I would sometimes get my ass blasted by the local fish out of the gate. Nearly 20 deaths later, I finally sent Blooper Boy into the cliffside permanently and stole the Noki people's prized possession. Mario was stored in a jar for safekeeping, and I played Amateur Dentist. The eel was a bit annoying, mostly due to placement and the lack of air, but was beatable nonetheless. I tried to escape the game, broke my legs trying to race the pink guy, the secret of the shell is that the level is a joke, beat the Shadow Mario again, and went to get a fish made of money, but found out that chasing a coin that moves around like 5 year old me using the spray can tool in Microsoft Paint is a pain in the ass. We're at 28 shines by this point, and if my editor is correct, we're only at 7 hours into this playthrough, and I think this is like 8 of 14 recordings. My ongoing war against the Dirty Lake continued mostly because I have no idea how to play video games. I had the lily pads figured out, but the actual level itself proved to be a constant problem for me. At 97 deaths, I caved in and decided to go back to Peanut Park one more time. Once again, timing and speed failed me. However, at 102, I finally got the perfect lineup and was able to take out Mecha Bowser. Bowser Jr. revealed himself and yoinked Peach off to the unfortunately named in hindsight mountain. Thanks 2020. Let me tell you, getting that shine was like taking shoes off after walking all day. I continued to collect shines in Peanut Park, killed a hamster, fell to my doom, collected coins, and fought not Yoshi. Speaking of, I was now able to get the Yoshi egg from Shadow Mario, but decided that the Ferris wheel was more important. Gotta have my priorities in order after all. That didn't work. Back in Rico Harbor, I wasted some time on the godforsaken fruit level. Despite all odds, luck was on my side and I managed to score three durians in a row. However, because someone at Nintendo in 2001 hated their job and wanted to make an extremely annoying stage, I never got very far. I spent an hour on this level, by the way. My next goal was to save the Yoshi Egg and open up Serena Beach. Now, if you've played this game, you likely know about Serena Beach Mission 1. To the uninitiated, this is the Manta Ray level. As a kid, I hated this level. This thing was horrifying, and now I have to do it without getting hurt. I failed a couple of times before going back to the plaza. After harassing Shadow Mario to get the rocket nozzle, I ended up in Pinta Village to do the missions there. All seemed to go well right up until the Goopy Inferno where I started running into issues, namely with where the hell I was supposed to go and these ghost things. In certain parts and levels in this game, there are these ghosts that will spawn that circle you for a short time before homing in on you for attack. If you're fast enough with Flood, you can make them disappear, or you can jump out of the way if you time it right. I'll touch more on these things later, as we have to go back to Bianco f***ing Hills. That predictably failed, so it was off to Serena Beach to deal with the Manta Ray again. Shockingly, no pun intended, this level actually wasn't too bad on a no-hits run. I managed to clear it just fine. However, my inability to platform properly affected my chances inside the hotel secret level, and I got spooked inside a storage closet. Once I was safely riding a wild animal inside the hotel, as you do, I got my hands on shine number 37. I partook in some gambling, mirroring my fruitless attempts to win the recent Powerball jackpot, and played my favorite game of try not to jump off a bridge while doing this water puzzle. Meanwhile, in Pinta Village, I tried the Goopy Inferno yet again to limited success. I spent more time than I'm willing to admit here, despite the fact that you're clearly seeing each moment I took damage on screen right now. After a reasonable amount of failures, I finally figured out the timing to jump out of the way of the ghosts so I don't get slapped out of the sky. My next problem was finding the right path to the mayor. It's more or less a small maze down there, so if you end up on the wrong path, you can end up like me and find yourself in an area fully surrounded by goop with no exit because of these one-way sliding grates. Granted the there's no escape, die type of level hazard is nothing new to Nintendo. I played the Japanese Mario 2 and I haven't forgotten the warp pipe that sends you back to World 1 but also has a death pit. 
with that shine in my grasp, I questioned why the Pintas have creatures that catch fire in their residential areas, and then was tasked with dealing with the Chuckster level. To those unfamiliar, this level is full of Pintas that throw you, and where they throw you is entirely dependent on the angle that you talk to them. If you're even slightly off, 2002 GameCube physics will take over and throw you into the trash. When I wasn't too busy getting stuck in areas and further decreasing the world's Yoshi population, I was in a totally different area. Here's a hint, it rhymes with Bianco Kills. Not to shamelessly plug my Twitter, but if you follow me there, you probably recognize this clip. Ever since I started playing this game, I have never seen this happen. I'm still mad about it. Un real. At 148, I finally finished this godforsaken level, got Shadow Mario, and after wasting a lot of time, I washed the beach, got stuck in Pinta Village again, and by this point I was at 49 shines. Note that I still believe in the 50 shine requirement. So in my eyes, if I was gonna get a victory, I was going to earn it. I was going to get the watermelon level finished one way or another. GameCube physics struck again as trying to move the watermelon was a task and a half. Sometime during it all, I saw a coin clip into the floor and managed to get the watermelon onto the walkway along the cliff. Using the power of sheer will to get it to the docks only for some Noki couple to ruin the whole damn thing by existing. I crushed their skulls as revenge and tried again. With enough time, I was safely on the boardwalk. The judge rigged the contest in my favor, and I blended Mario into a fine paste. It was at this point where I realized I should do some more research, and after checking the player's guide for Super Mario Sunshine Online, I needed to do all the Shadow Mario missions to trigger the end game. I did the watermelon level for nothing. Can you imagine how I felt? I checked my shine counts, and thankfully I didn't have much left to do. I went back to Pinta Village to do the Chuckster level, only to screw up the last guy by dolphin diving through his fat ass. I collected myself on the title screen over what just happened, and was more successful on the second attempt. And finally got around to clearing Shadow Mario in both Pinta Village and Serena Beach. And with that final shine collected, Delfino Plaza got flooded, and I was finally able to begin the path to the final boss in Unrelated to Disease Mountain. Pay close attention to that fault counter, because I can describe my experience in this place with one word. Dead, 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 dead. I'm going to spoil it now, the final boss of this game accounts for nearly a third of every fault in this entire run. It didn't matter if it was the fire, it didn't matter if it was the spikes, whether I got a mouthful of Bowser's bathwater or crashed the lava-resistant boat, any possible way I could have failed during this part of the game, I managed to do it. I got some short relief when I got to the save point by the rocket nozzle, but keep in mind, I also have to deal with Bowser and his son. No prize for guessing that it's not easy. You have Bowser's fire, which you can change where he uses it at will, sometimes forcing you to land right on top of it. You have the bullet bills, which can screw you over if you change direction. You have Bowser's little ground pound if you stay on the edge too long, which will launch his bathwater in your way and is sometimes unavoidable. And on a few occasions, the rocket nozzle just straight up refused to function properly. By the time I was deep into the 200s territory, I could do the first half of this level like it's no big deal. Keep in mind this is a section which is one of the hardest parts of the game. I was doing it so quickly my brother actually got anxiety watching me go through it so fast. I had seen the cutscene that plays before the fight so many times, I could recite it from memory. Thankfully, with due time, I started learning some tricks on how to proceed, like noting how the ground pound not only shatters Mario's pelvis, but also knocks the bullet bills out of the sky, making liberal use of the rocket nozzle to traverse my way around the tub and even going over Bowser's fire. If there were a word to describe this entire section of the game, it would be tedious. There is no checkpoint once you get to Bowser. Do all of the Lava Lake section, the cloud jumps, and then get to him. If you want an idea of what I went through, the last recording I have for this game is two and a half hours long, and all of it is this level. But thankfully, after two days worth of recording, 256 failures over the course of 20 hours, I was finally able to land the last ground pound and finish the boss. The tub spilled, and the final cutscene played. Flood broke, the population of Delfino Island cloned itself in celebration, Bowser told his son the truth, Flood unbroke, the credits rolled, and I beat Super Mario Sunshine without taking any damage. Do I recommend doing this? 
No, play the game normally, I hated this. Thank you for watching, leave a like and your thoughts down in the comments below, subscribe for future videos, and be sure to check out more of my previous work. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram, handles on the screen and linked below. I'm Mr. Max, I'll see you next time. Oh, my God.